Hi guys, I'm Aaron from Empire Toys 113 and on this video we are going to be going through my do's and don'ts of toy hunting at Toy Fest. Okay guys, I get asked by a lot of people, do I have any tips for toy hunting? Now, there is no rule book out there to be a toy hunter. Uh, what I would say is majority of the time a lot of it is down to blind luck. I call it luck. In my experience, there's no such thing as luck. Now, it's just being in the right place at the right time. Whether that be when you walk past somewhere and they're just getting out that case fresh load of uh, gear, or someone's been buying something, they've just moved something, and all of a sudden you see something hidden there. It's generally luck. One of the only other tips I can give you guys is get there early. Wake up, wake up. The early bird catches the worm, especially at toy fairs and flea markets and car boot sales. You're going to get a good experience if you get there early and basically get the stuff before someone else does. Uh, that's really the only tips I can give you, but I can give you some do's and don'ts to hopefully help you uh, enhance your toy hunting experience and give you a bit of extra cash in your pocket to spend elsewhere. Well, spend more on toys really. Okay, one of my big don'ts at a toy fair is to throw your wallet at the first store that you see. Look, a year's salary right here. That's what I call them, fun coupons. Yeah. Now imagine we're at a toy fair now and you just come and see this. This is my stall behind me and you're sitting there going, oh my God, wow, there's amazing stuff. I would say don't jump straight away. Don't jump in with both feet. Uh, make sure you check out the stall. The NEC Toy Fair has 550 stalls. You want to make sure you get in there, have a look at all the stalls, see what's about and everything. And uh, you might find yourself, you might save yourself a few quid, then uh, spending it all on the first stall you see. That's right by the entrance, looking all glamorous. So my first do is cash. Now at a toy fair, like a car boot sale, like a flea market, cash is king. You're gonna find yourself getting better deals if you're paying in cash. For one of the reasons why is the card machines at these venues tend to charge the seller for the transaction. Whether it be a flat fee or a percentage of whatever it is, they'll charge the seller. So if you're going to go up there and ask for a couple of quid or a fiver or whatever, how much off your what you're buying, and then all of a sudden they're like, how are you paying? And you say card. They'll be less reluctant to give you that deal because obviously they'll be losing more money from the card transaction. So guys, cash is a big must at toy fairs. Also, another thing that you don't want to let yourself down by is the Wi-Fi and the phone signal in these buildings. Now, you might find your holy grail item. You must choose, but choose wisely, or else the true grail will bring you life. The false grail will take it from you. All of a sudden, the guy's up there with his phone trying to get signal to use the card machine, and it's not working, and the transaction's not going through. You don't want that. So, guys, cash. Also, the cash machines in these places are usually ATMs. They'll usually charge you to take your money out, and every little bit of money you spend elsewhere is less money you can spend on toys. One of my big don'ts is don't harass a seller to drop a price. Now, we're all there for a haggle. We all know it's part of the game, but... Get back then. No, 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 I just paid you. What? Yeah. This bloke won't haggle. Won't haggle? Being persistently hassling someone to drop a price when they're not budging it's not going to make them want to sell it. You, you're not going to, in a word, bully someone in, into giving you a good price. Now, what I would say for you to do is to go around, enjoy the toy fair, and then later on in the day, come back. And if the seller still has that item for sale, ask to see if we can get a deal later on in the day, they might be, again, more willing to do so. But if you hassled them for like five minutes straight to drop the price, going back, they're still not going to sell it to you for a cheap. So don't hassle people to drop price. Haggle, but don't bully the price. Do have your go-to sellers. Now, I'm not saying that you should only buy from two or three stalls. Have a couple, well, as many as you like, really, of go-to sellers. How much you got on your turbos? In general, for you? For me. For you, two quid. Now, regular custom will get you better prices, because obviously, if they, know you, if they know you're going to keep coming back to them, they're going to want to keep you sweet. They're going to want you keep to coming back, so they're going to give you better deals. 
Now, that might mean that the first couple of times you get some transactions out of these people, you might end up having to pay the full whack, but in the long run, it will open a better experience for you to get more deals in the future from that seller because they know you're a trusted person and know you're gonna keep coming back. Don't use the phrase, I found it cheaper at another stall. I'm a Toydarian. My trick's gonna work on me. Own the money. I don't think anyone has ever won a deal of haggle when their opening line was, I found it cheaper somewhere else. Because you're only ever gonna get back, well then go buy it from them then. And you're already on the back foot for when you wanna haggle the price. It's a real no-no, it's just courtesy. Uh, it's not going to get you anywhere. If you have found it cheaper, excellent. You know, go buy it from the cheaper place. But don't, don't expect the person, because they're not going to believe you. Like seriously, they're, they're not going to believe that the stall five rows behind has got the same figure for a cheaper price. They're not going to go check, but they're probably not going to sell it to you either. And also, I like to say is that when they do the shows, a lot of sellers have a chance in the morning to walk around. So they are in communication. So guys, don't use the phrase, I found it cheaper over there, because it's not gonna get you anywhere. Do try and buy in multiples. Now you're more likely to get a good deal if you bulk buy. So if you pick up 10 loose Star Wars figures, the seller's more likely to, when you put them all together, to give it a nice even number than when you buy one figure and wanna get a pound or two off it. Now, it sounds silly, but trust me, buying in bulk will get you better deals. Now I'm not saying going up to the stall and offering the stall holder you know, a blank check for everything they've got, but you're more likely if you buy three or four things to get a better deal than if you bought a separate thing along the way. Don't ask a seller to put something behind for you to save and not come back. Seriously guys, this will only put you in bad books and it will, in the long term, you won't get good deals from sellers if they don't trust you. It's a give and take, isn't it? The seller and the buyer have to trust each other for the good deals to come about. So if you pick something up off a stall, for argument's sake, Raphael, and you ask someone to hold on to him for you and put it behind the stall and come back, don't just never come back. Somebody toss me a rope! They aren't paying me enough to take this kind of abuse. Because that seller will have that sitting behind for the whole day and they'll have missed out other chances to sell. Now, as well as that, if you do just go and buy it for somewhere else and you find it for cheaper and buy it somewhere else, just go back to the seller and say, look, I found it cheaper somewhere else, I bought it. They will not be annoyed. They will not be annoyed. They'll be more annoyed if you don't tell them because at least they'll not have a chance to sell their item during the day. So guys, it's just common courtesy. So uh, if you can, just let them know. It, they will hold stuff for you. Trust me, they will. Uh, they don't like to say, no one wants to say to you, yeah, I'll hold it onto it for you, but you have to give me 50% deposit. No one wants to do that at Toy Fairs. It's very friendly. It's a friendly situation. Don't ruin it by not going back and telling people you don't want it. It's just courtesy. Do check out the smaller regional Toy Fairs. Now, I know somewhere like the NEC has a massive appeal to it. And I don't blame you for going to it, it's amazing. But if you wanna find some of the best deals, the smaller toy fairs, the more regional ones, is where you're probably likely to get some good deals. For argument's sake, I years ago, maybe eight years ago, I went to a toy fair uh, with my dad. Uh, we went to it, uh, it was mostly trains and cars, that was it, there wasn't much toys there, which was gutting for me, but he's massively into his model railways and everything, so he loved it, which was great. But one of the sellers there selling trains and cars had a couple of vintage Star Wars figures and they had these two figures here. Now I paid £20 for the two of them. A small regional toy fair. I'm trying to say is basically these small toy fairs, they might not have as much stuff as the NEC, but you could get lucky. For the sake of half a day trip out, you might find some gold, which is what it's all about, isn't it? You want to have that story of, oh, I went to that really local toy fair and found these here and now they, they sit happily in my collection now which I'm very happy with. Remember just as much as we are there hunting retro toys, vintage toys, having fun trying to fulfill our youth and have awesome displays like this, uh, toys are designed for kids.
So make sure you bring your kids along, get them into it, get them buying toys and enjoying playing with toys. It's great for their imagination and everything. Uh, something that you guys can sort of bond over. So don't forget that as much as it's about buying stuff and having cool collections, toys are for kids. So let's uh, make sure they're having fun as well. But also, watch the kids' hands. Kids love to look by touching, and there are some uh, expensive retro figures out there that are that the kids won't know the difference for. So guys, you don't want to be uh, having to spend money out for uh, breaking some vintage toys because some of those toys are expensive. And now my last do now is probably the biggest do of them all. Have fun, enjoy it, go to these things. Toy fairs are amazing. There's so much, um, you can find great stuff online and everything on eBay, Facebook groups, all that jazz, but nothing will beat going to a toy fair, a room full of like-minded collectors and sellers where you can strike conversations with, chat to people that are into the same things with you or maybe not into, I don't know, 80s Star Wars figures, but they're really into the 90s Star Wars figures. It's great to open like your mindset up to these sort of things and just generally have chat with people that um, have a like-minded way of collecting. And also talk to the sellers. The sellers are there to sell stuff. They want to sell. No, no one goes to a toy fair and not wanting to sell. So get chatting with those guys. Make sure you're uh, getting them on your side. Make your toy hunting so much better and so much more enjoyable if you just enjoy the experience going along with it. Don't go in there like stressing yourself out that you must find loads of bargains and you must find the best thing ever because you won't enjoy it and that's where you won't have fun and this is what it's all about it's all about having fun and enjoying it so there you go guys i hope that has helped you out a little bit and uh, will give you a little uh starting point for when the toy fairs start up uh, i really appreciate if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please do so uh, like i said before in the previous videos the channel is growing nicely and we want to keep that subscriber base going up also whack a like down on the video because obviously it helps with all that youtube algorithm stuff that we youtubers keep going on about and uh, whack it down in the comment below what are your do's and don'ts of uh, toy fairs guys thank you very much for watching i really do appreciate it and i'll see you very soon peace